Welcome to Football Game Plans Power Rankings. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Once again, football is in the air and a lot has gone on. And as we always do around this time here on the Game Plus Network, we love to kick off our power ranking show by taking a look at the moving and shaking that's going on in our NFL power rankings. And there is no change at number 32 with the Miami Dolphins. It's unfortunate for the fan base to witness what's happening out there on the field for the Dolphins. Preseason, you could look around and make a case that the Dolphins could have potentially been a fly in the ointment in the AFC East. But with the recent moves made by this front office, the team is clearly all in for the future and not the present. Talk about an unfortunate series of events for the New York Jets as they have their starting QB, Sam Darnold, come down with mononucleosis. Their second stringer in Trevor Simeon gets hurt very early in the Monday night matchup against the Cleveland Browns and is out for the season. So they had to go to their third stringer in Luke Falk, who was signed a day before the Monday night game just to be the backup. And just like in Miami, will look to be a promising season for the game for gang green has quickly gone off the rails as we enter week three. Looking at teams 26 through 30 and the Carolina Panthers will likely be without Cam Newton this week as he's still recovering from an injury. He didn't look himself at all last week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jacksonville seems to be imploding and the talks have already started surrounding their star cornerback Jalen Ramsey who wants to be traded. The Bengals followed up a strong week one showing with a flat uninspired effort against San Francisco and the Redskins can't find enough defense to keep teams from hitting big plays in the passing game over their heads. But when you look at the New York Giants with the news coming down this week that Daniel Jones, the rookie sixth overall pick in this past April's draft, was named the starter for this upcoming game and probably for the rest of the season. It signals the end of the Eli Manning era in New York City. Obviously, Jones was drafted for a reason to eventually take over for Eli Manning. But with the season off to a rocky 0-2 start, the Giants staff or maybe front office or John Myra decided at the time was now to go with the Eli Manning clone in Jones. And if we're being truly honest and keeping it 100, the offense wasn't necessarily the problems with the Giants, more so than the defense that has given up 35 and 28 points respectively to both the Cowboys and Buffalo Bills. Moving right along to teams 21 through 25 and the Arizona Cardinals fought hard against the stout Baltimore Ravens team, keeping that game very competitive for all four quarters. It'll be interesting to see if it all comes together this week against the Carolina Panthers. Denver lost a heartbreaker against the Chicago Bears, which in my opinion was all of the faults of the referees and the blown call at the end. Oakland took one on the chin last week against Kansas City and the Lions got back on the winning track or got on the winning track with the stunner at home against the Los Angeles Chargers. Hopefully this is the type of game that could spearhead a run for this football team. The Pittsburgh Steelers are another squad that is dealing with an injury to their starting QB. Ben Roethlisberger is out for the season with an injured elbow. He'll be replaced by second year player Mason Rudolph, who the Steelers drafted in the third round of the 2018 draft. And what I like about head coach Mike Tomlin is that he expects players on that team to perform, no matter if you're on the depth chart as a starter or on the practice spot. And that goes for the first time starting QB out of Oklahoma State. But what bodes well for the Steelers is that Rudolph already has great rapport with one of their starting wideouts and his former college teammate, James Washington. So with the expected chemistry between the two that will yield productive results, it could quietly make the Steelers number one option in Juju Smith-Schuster's job very much easier moving forward. So keep an eye on the Steelers as the season goes along. And we'll continue to steamroll through this NFL Week 3 Power Rankings with teams 16 through 20. And that's where you'll find some of the guys that are moving up this list. San Francisco, Tampa Bay, and Chicago are all coming off of impressive victories in Week 2. The Minnesota Vikings at some point will begin to realize what we all see as a problem with their football team, quarterback Kirk Cousins, and his ineffective play in crucial situations. Hopefully they'll make plans to improve the play from that spot immediately. You can say that the Buffalo Bills have gotten improved play from the pivot position as Josh Allen is playing very good situational football. Last week against the New York Giants was the first game in his career without a turnover. That's a huge step in his development as a quarterback. You can get a great sense of how much this team likes him as a player, and he has been a big part of the reason why the Bills are off to an impressive 2-0 start to the season. 
teams 11 through 15 is where we get into what I like to think are your stronger teams in the NFL at this juncture of the season. The Saints will have to lean on backup quarterback Teddy Bridgewater for at least six to seven weeks as Drew Brees recovers from an injured thumb. The Chargers shot themselves in the foot against the Detroit Lions, as did the Titans against the Indianapolis Colts. Now, the Browns didn't look impressive against the Jets, but what's more important is that they found a way to get through that game healthy and with a victory. Atlanta was impressive in their Sunday night win against the Philadelphia Eagles on both sides of the ball. But defensively, you got to give a huge shout out to cornerback Desmond Trufant for his two interceptions of Carson Wentz. And that was Trufant's first double interception game of his career. Moving on, and now we're into the top 10 with the Packers, Seahawks, Eagles, Colts, and Texans. And despite numbers 8 through 10 having one loss, they were competitive in each of them, thus not falling very far, and in some cases, moving up the rankings. I'm impressed with how the Seattle Seahawks are playing football this season. They are finding ways to win by any means necessary, and it looks a lot like their 2012 squad that found a way to get a wild card berth in Russell Wilson's rookie season. And as we move into the top five, at number five is America's new favorite team, the Baltimore Ravens, who have been excellent so far this season, getting great play from Lamar Jackson. At number four are the Los Angeles Rams, who are still pretty dominant on defense and next to impossible to stop on offense. They look very dangerous once again in the NFC. Third are the Kansas City Chiefs. Each week we see another new ridiculous throw coming from the reigning MVP in Patrick Mahomes. Now he and Lamar Jackson will go toe-to-toe -to -toe this weekend in a battle of titans out there at Arrowhead. At number two, it remains the same as last week as the Dallas Cowboys are hard to ignore. It's hard to ignore all that production that's coming out of Dallas and that's all you see coming from Big D. And at number one are the New England Patriots who just got even better last week with wide receiver Antonio Brown. And this looks like a complete team moving forward, ready to reclaim their spot atop the AFC. Be sure to order your copy of the Go-Go Offense by Coach Brennan Marion on footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Coach Marion goes through the ins and outs of his explosive offense, one that's tearing up the college football field and putting a lot of points on the scoreboard. Again, you can order your copy at footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Football Game Plan is brought to you in part by... Ninth and Lux. Visit the website ninthandlux.com and check out the clothing gallery. Do you music with featured artist IW in his latest album, Season 2? You can check that out on iTunes as well as doyoumusic.com. Nesby Phipps, art, life, entertainment. Nesbyphipps.com. Grind It Out Fitness. Visit the website grinditoutfitness.com and download the app. I'm Alex Marinoni, offering you football game plan's best bets for week three. Let's kick it off with the Denver Broncos heading to Green Bay to take on the Packers. The Broncos offense has struggled to get things going this season and have a tough task against a very improved Green Bay defense on the road. The Packers offense took a big step forward with, these touch with three touchdowns against a very tough Vikings team and look to be trending up. The line opens at minus six and a half for Green Bay. I take them to cover this bet. For Game 2, we have the Atlanta Falcons going to Indianapolis to take on the Colts. Atlanta will be coming off an emotional, hard-fought win with the Eagles and will have a tough task going to Indy. I expect the Falcons to take a step back offensively, especially when they play a Colts team that looks to control the clock. The total points for now is set at 47.5. I like the under in this game. In Game 3, we have the New York Jets heading to New England to take on the Patriots. The Jets are down heavy in personnel with Sam Darnold out and Quincy Inouye done for the season. The Patriots have come out, come out the gates clicking on all cylinders on both sides of the ball and don't look to slow down. The line opens at minus 17.5 for New England, and there is nothing that tells me they can't cover this huge spread, especially at home. Take New England here. In Game 4, we have the Tennessee Titans heading to Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars. The Jaguars defense really stepped up this week against a tough Houston offense. The Titans, despite the loss, held a good Colts team to under 20 after a very impressive performance against the Browns in Cleveland. With backup quarterback Gardner Minshew under center for the Jags and a stout defense in Jacksonville, I expect a low-scoring game here. The total point is set at 40. I would take the under. In Game 5, we have the Miami Dolphins heading into Dallas to play the Cowboys. The Cowboys look to be among one of the best teams in the NFL this year with an explosive offense. The Dolphins, on the other hand, are in full tank mode, and it appears that it is only going to get worse week by week. 
at home they have given up 59 points and 43 points respectively and are now asked to go on the road to take on Dallas. The line opens at an astro astronomical minus 21 for Dallas, but I think the Cowboys are more than capable of covering it. In our next game, we have the Oakland Raiders heading to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. The Vikings have an elite defense and star power all around the offensive side of the ball. After struggling in Green Bay, I expect them to bounce back in a big way against the Raiders defense. The Raiders offense has shown signs of improvement, but will struggle on the road here. The line is set at minus eight for Minnesota, and I see them covering it. In our final game, we have the Baltimore Ravens heading to Kansas City to take on the Kansas City Chiefs. Points will be scored in this game as both offenses look to be among the best in the league. Both of these teams are capable of putting up massive points with the total points opening at 55. I fully expect this to hit. We could see a game where both teams are in the 30s here. Take the over. This was Football Game Plan's Best Bets. I'm Alex Marinoni. Welcome back to Football Game Plan's Power Rankings here on the Game Plus Network. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. And now it's time to go into a little buy or sell with some of the top players that we, we're seeing right now in both the NFL and college football, taking a look at who's gonna be the top MVP candidate, and also taking a look at the FCS and Division II level at the Walter Payton Award finalist so far, who's leading that race, as well as the Harlem Hill Trophy as well. So let's just jump right into it right now by starting with who we think is leading the race with the MVP voting in the NFL. If you haven't noticed already, Cleveland Browns defensive end Miles Garrett has been playing some ridiculous ball this season, showing a lot of what made him such a highly coveted prospect coming out of Texas A&M. But because the NFL seemingly hates defensive players with regards to this award, otherwise Aaron Donald would already have two. I'm selling his odds on becoming the lead league MVP, but you have to give props to Miles Garrett for what he has done so far this season, getting after the quarterback. I'm also buying Lamar Jackson's odds. We saw last season, how wrong the league was on Patrick Mahomes as a prospect coming into the league. So the overcorrection, in addition to his spectacular play, led him to winning the MVP. Many in the league and media were as wrong as rang, if not more so, on Lamar Jackson. So if his play continues, he's almost a shoe-in. Dak Prescott is also almost a shoe-in as well because of his tremendous play and what could potentially be a Super Bowl season for the Cowboys. Prescott is also playing for a new contract, and if he keeps this pace going, that number may be in the billions by the time it's all said and done for number four. And although we don't normally see back-to-back -back MVP winners, Patrick Mahomes makes it tough to sell his odds because he is a legit alien back there throwing a the football and should get close to that 50 touchdown number once again this season for Kansas City. Let's do some more buy or sell by taking a look at some of the early front runners for the Walter Payton Award, which is the FCS equivalent to the Heisman Trophy. Starting with Sanford quarterback Chris Olodokin, who has been playing out of his mind so far this season. He's completed 72% of his passes, 11 touchdowns to only three interceptions at 13.2 yards of completion or attempt. I'm definitely buying his odds as last year's winner of this award, Devlin Hodges, who now plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers also played at Sanford, so the former South Florida transfer is off to a fantastic start to the season. I'm also buying the stock of North Dakota State QB Trey Lance. The redshirt freshman is a dual threat dynamo who has totaled 13 touchdowns, nine through the air, four on the ground. He's also completing 79% of his passes and has yet to throw an interception. He's both the leading passer and rusher on the number one team in the nation. Down on the Jersey Shore at Monmouth is one of the leading rushers in the FCS and Pete Guerrero. The junior tailback rush, has rushed for 393 yards at five yards a carry. He wasn't even supposed to be the starter this year, but jumped to that starting role and has taken it by storm. But I will sell on his odds as there seems to be a bit of a bias toward the quarterback position with this award, just like the Heisman Trophy as of late, and that could keep Guerrero out of the running by season's end. He's a terrific playmaker nonetheless. Football Game Plan is brought to you in part by Financial Coaching LLC, Investment, Retirement, Security. Stewardship Credit, Financial Growth is in your hands. StewardshipCredit.com. Adrian Marie Photo, Photographer, Writer, Management. Adrian Marie Photography.com. Lock Multimedia.
game of football has taught me so many, so many things, man. Now, think about, think about the huddle we have right now, right? I tell people this all the time. There's a reason why they call it a huddle. You know, he, people have been huddling all their lives, trying to find ways to enhance each other's lives. The great teams, the great teams do that all the time. The great teams do that. The better the, the better the huddle, the better the team. And so it, it, it's simple, man, how if you huddle for all the right reasons, we wouldn't have purpose. We wouldn't have some of the challenges that we have in our society. But as we all know, there's always a moment when somebody doesn't belong in the huddle. And yet we have to continue to move on. we got to continue to play. So the game of life, man, is always surrounded, starting with the hub. And uh, for me, I'm, I'm lucky enough to know that, you know, by the graces of God, man, it's, it's been a it's been a nice hub. It's been a nice hub. And if I just keep making sure that he's in front of me, I'm gonna be all right. I'm Troy Anthony, bringing you Football Game Plan's best bets for Week 3 in the NFL. Let's kick things off with the Eagles visiting the Detroit Lions. Both of these teams had exciting finishes in their Week 2 matchups. On opposite sides of the spectrum, Detroit squeaked one out against the Chargers. But they're not so fortunate this week as I'm taking the Eagles to win the game on the money line at minus 315. Our next matchup has the Cincinnati Bengals traveling east to take on the Buffalo Bills. Andy Dalton has passed for a lot of yards in the first two weeks of the season, but that Bills pass defense proves too tough for him this week, as I like the Bills on the money line at minus 265. The Cardinals have not been able to start off either of their two matchups with any momentum. The Panthers haven't been, have been in contention in both games, but haven't been able to close them out. I see the Panthers being able to close this one out, so I'm taking them at minus 141 on the money line. With the loss of Big Ben for the season, the Steelers are going to have a tough time trotting, trotting out Mason Rudolph against arguably the most explosive defense to start the season in the 49ers. That's why I'm taking the Niners on the money line at minus 295. With the Chargers playing host to the Texans this week, this game would sure to be a shootout, right? On the contrary, both of these teams have pretty solid defenses and played in, just played in two lockdown defensive games. Will they continue that in back-to-back -back weeks, playing in a lockdown defensive type of game, with the Texans having a little bit of a slight edge? So I'm taking Houston at plus three and a half at minus 114. New Orleans also lost their starting QB. With Drew Brees sidelined six weeks, it's hard to see him heading in Seattle and defeating the 12th man. I'm going to have to take Seattle on the money line here at minus 215. The Los Angeles Rams and the Cleveland Browns have two offenses who on paper should end up in a shootout. But the Rams defense is no joke, loaded with star after star. That's why the Rams are my bet in this game on the money line at minus 155. The Monday night matchup has the Chicago Bears head into the nation's capital to take on the Redskins. The Redskins have proved so far this season they can hang with some good teams. But the Bears have a lot to prove after losing to the Packers and barely squeaking by the Broncos. And with that defense, I think the Bears get it done in Washington. So I have to take them on a money line at minus 200. There you have it, your best bets for week three in the NFL. For Football Game Plan, I'm Troy Anthony. Welcome to Football Game Plans Power Rankings. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. And before we wrap up this show, we can't leave without talking about some of the top teams in college football. And this is going to be our power poll regardless of division. So it's going to be a combination of FBS, FCS, Division II, Division III, NAIA, JUCO, and also U Sports, which is the Canadian college football. So here's our top 10 power, power poll in college football for week four. Remember, this power poll is a list of the best teams in all of college football in all divisions. And as we take a look at six through 10, you see Titans from the U Sports League in the Western Mustangs who are a perfect four and no on the season. 
Hutchinson Junior College, who consistently produces some of the top FBS transfers year after year, checks in at number nine. Morningside out of Iowa is the number one team in NAIA football. Marin, Mary Hart and Bill, I'm sorry, kicked off their season last week with a big time win, looking to defend their 2018 Division III national title. At number six are the Oklahoma Sooners, whose offense is looking unstoppable with quarterback Jalen Hurts at the controls. Moving into the top five, and at number five are the Ohio State Buckeyes. Quarterback Justin Fields is one of the early front runners in the Heisman race. Valdosta State is the best team in Division II right now and own one of the best offenses in college football, led by head coach Kerwin Bell. They're also defending their 2018 national championship. No surprise at number one and at number three, as both Alabama and Clemson are always near or at the top of any rankings, but number two is the college football team that no one wants to face on any given Saturday, and that's the North Dakota State Bison. What a tremendous list of college football teams in this top 10, only the best of the best. So that's a wrap for Football Game Plans Power Rankings. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of The Playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts, and don't forget to check out and subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan, and also Thursday and Friday, keep it locked here on the Game Plus Network for Football Game Plans NFL All 32 Show and Football Game Plans College Football Tailgate here on Game Plus Network.